Hey guys, um, what do we have here? Something for me to knock over? Well, this is where we're going to go through discussing an inch bag. The I ain't never coming back to civilization again. And uh, here's a representation of what all it entails. There's a lot of stuff here. This is probably going to be a somewhat long video, but we're going to try and go over a bunch of stuff as we discuss the ins and outs of inch bags. So we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. First off, you're going to want some way to uh, stable your, stabilize yourself as you're walking because you, you, this isn't light. Um, inch bag means you need to carry everything that you're going to need to survive. Um, anybody that's been in the military that's done, uh, well, even people, you know, starting just basic training. Um, on the average, you have to take and carry an 80-pound rock two, three, four, five forced marches, you know, mile forced marches. Um, then there's a good old-fashioned 12-mile forced march where the guys at the front are doing a nice casual walk. The guys at the back are basically running, and uh, depending how big the group is. Those are no picnic. You know, 80 pounds, Georgia heat in the summer. That'll tear you up quick. Even if you don't suffer from heat stroke, you'll have one. So this is pushing that 80 pound limit just in and of itself. Then you've got to worry about clothes, other tools. So I've kind of broken this up into a couple different groups. So as we get into each item, we'll get into it. So I guess the first is some sort of walking stick. Now this is my personal walking stick. It's big enough I can take a lean on it if I need to. Um, it's also pretty strong. It's two inch poplar. Uh, make a good self defense if I need to. And, uh, I swing it hard enough at him with the end of it there. Oh, what's that on top, you're saying? I ain't got enough light. Hold on, let me turn out a little extra here. It is a challenge coin from the USCCA. You see it better now? It's the challenge coin from the USCCA. That's just, that's my walking stick. Next, we're going to discuss clothing. And yes, eventually I'm going to sit down because oh, I'm getting old, you know. I want to sit down. But clothing, you're going to need a hat. You're going to need two or three, oops, throw my socks on the floor. Two or three days worth of clothes. Um, I would recommend, and this is just my personal recommendation, even though I, everybody says, oh, they're tactical, you don't need them. Tactical pants that are made with ripstop, the way they're designed, are well, they're going to be worth their weight in gold, basically, if you're never coming back to civilization. They're not going to wear out as fast. Two or three pairs of these, you know, complete two or three days of change of clothes, almost a must. Um, next... We'll go over the next little item. Now, this is a full Atlas carrier. Now, obviously, if you're bugging out, you don't plan on going to the entire United States. Well, I don't think you will. Plus, there's all kinds of stuff in here that you wouldn't need anyway. But say, you know, you're in South Carolina and you want to go south. Well, you can figure out the route you're going. And then grab the next state line and figure out where you're going there. And these trucker atlases, while they may not be topographical, they do indicate 80% of the terrain you're going to have to go through. And I do that because truckers need to know if there's inclines or declines and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it gives you pretty good reference. This is a laminated one, so I can draw on it if needed. And I would only pull out the map pages I would need. And then I would put them somewhere in here for easy access. So this was just a representation. No, I ain't showing you where I'm going or how I'm getting there. I do believe in some OPSEC. Come on, guys. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to pull the table out, park my booty, and go over the rest of it. So I'll be right back. Truth be told, with clothing, a couple pieces of paper for maps, and all this right here, we're pushing that 100-pound mark. So the honest, real answer is, are you going to plug out 
inch bag style for long periods of time over long distances? The honest answer is probably not. In order to carry enough equipment, as you can see here, and this is just basic. You know, I don't have enough here to make a log cabin or nothing, although probably make a pretty good start at it. I don't have any firearms with this setup. You know, and if you have a firearm, well, you're going to need the firearm. You're going to have to have ammo for that firearm, a cleaning kit for that firearm. Although I do have a place in this kit for it to be. So I'm, I'm not discounting it completely because I do have a firearm of my own. And once I add the ammo for mine, I'm going to be pushing right close to 110 pounds easy you know, with everything here. That's half my body weight. That's 50%. Well, it's a little less than 50%, but still, that's a lot of body weight that you're losing. So you're not going to be moving at lightning speed. You're going to be moving at a crawl. So you may want to plan your route so that you're nowhere near any civilization in any way, shape, or form because you ain't going to move fast. Stealth is going to have to be your ally. That's just the way it is if you're planning on inch bagging it. But let's go further. Get this off underneath here. Of course, you're going to need a good hat. Yes, this is camo. It's the only nice big hat I've got. It's got room across the top to breathe, so as you sweat, it doesn't tear up your hat completely. But you're going to want a good hat. That's light clothes, a must. It doesn't have to be a uh, heavy bill cap. It can be a soft one like that. You can still put lights on it. Let's go over this, and I'll get this out of the way. You're going to want a load-bearing belt. Um, as I've mentioned in the uh, car truck stash kit, when you start adding stuff to a kit, especially heavy items like shovels, axes, and stuff like that, you're going to need a belt that can actually hold that weight. You're not going to put it on the belt on your pants because it's going to pull your pants off your butt and then you're going to run around buck naked. You don't want that. Um, so a load-bearing belt. I've got my shovel on here. i got my cook kit. And we've all been over it. We know it's got my first, some of my first aid in it. Um, it, it's got the basics for first aid. I got my knife with my fire starter and you know, extra fire starting stuff plus my knife. And I've also got on here now a drop leg holster for a pistol. Some people might not like it, but just from having carried a few pounds before, um, I know I'm not going to be able to reach over here to the side and pull anything out when I've got a bag strapped to my back. And I've got a load-bearing belt trying to carry some of the weight. Oh, for me, I would set this up so when my hand's riding at my side, I can actually rest my hand on the butt of the pistol without changing my stance anyway and be able to grab it if need be. I mean, that, that's just an option. I recommend that option unless you're wearing a plate-carrying vest and plus a bag and you know, you're going to be... You're pushing over half your body weight now. And for the lighter people, this isn't even an option. You're going to have to have a cart to carry it. There's just no two ways about it. And on a cart, you're going to want something that's got some pretty thick, wide wheels. So it's got less rolling resistance. And uh, wheels in the back should probably be about two inches wider than the wheels up front. Why? Because the wheels up front, are you're going to have to pull over first. Then you're going to pull the back ones over. There's, there's pros and cons to both ways. Some people want it even. Some want it bigger in the front, lighter in the rear for weight distribution. Uh, just You're going to need a cart. That's all there is to it. But uh, I'm going to set this down to the side. Also, you're going to want a machete of sorts. Now, of course, mind you, these are this is an extreme inch kit. You know, this is, like I said, you have no plans of coming back to civilization anytime soon. So you're going to need something like this. This has got a nice wide two-inch belt on it. And it, the guy that made it did a really nice job for me. And I can put this on the load-bearing belt as well. It's just easier to keep it in the water bladder spot. Um, next. Some silent but deadly killing stuff. This is one of them cheap little crossbow pistols, and it is cheap cost, but it's an 80-pound draw weight. Um, if you're going to get one, make sure you get you some bowstring. 
or bow wax, I mean, and an extra string or two. Plenty of arrows. This is a nice, quiet way to get rabbit, uh, squirrel. I wouldn't try shooting a bird. You'll miss. I've tried. Um, now, whatever small edible game is around you, this could be an option. Uh, option is the key word. Do I think everybody should have one? It's entirely up to you. My opinions on this are just that. My opinions. Take what I have show you here and go with it. I'm just trying to show that to a degree there's a fallacy to an inch bag. Why it can be viable and you can condense this down into a little bit of nothing and you might be able to survive but not indefinitely. You're going to have to wait to make a semi-permanent shelter to build a permanent shelter. And I've got enough tools here. I could come close to that. Um, if I was down south, yeah, no problem. Northern climates, like Ohio, Michigan, Vermont, New York, upper state New York, some of those areas, yeah, I don't even have enough here to survive up there year-round. It would take a lot more. It would truly take a community. So, therefore, you're not leaving civilization. You're just, le you know, you're going to go from one group of people to another. Hopefully, it's a bunch of like-minded people and you can build. But I'm going to set this off to the side. On the outside of this, I got a flashlight. Let's see if I can remember where I got everything attached here. Got a flashlight. And whatever flashlight you need, you're going to have to have extra batteries for it and a way to charge those batteries. Which, I'm probably not going to be able to do it sitting down. Let's see, maybe... I'll just go ahead and release that. Ah, yes. Batteries. And the uh, Olight USB charger in here. See if I can put all this up here without knocking stuff over. You're going to want some heavy rope. Now, how much you get depends on where you're at. But I recommend at least 50 feet of heavy rope. This is weight bearing. You can use this to climb. So you're going to want something that you can use to climb with. Pull logs into place, whatever. You know. Wrap that around there so I don't lose it. And sleeping bag on the outside. And this one is tightly wrapped up. Yep, see, wrapped up. Don't want it coming off. You don't want to lose half your sleep system. This is a warm weather bag. It's, it says 50. I've slept in it at 40 degrees and was fine, but I like cold air. Some people don't. So this 50 degree bag is just that 50 degrees. Um, this is also a very heavy bag. They make lighter bags. As you heard, it hit the floor. They make lighter bags that do a much better job of keeping you warm and weigh a ton less. But that's the bag I have, so that's why it's on here. Also, it's a little solar powered light. We've shown this before. We This, even though it's not in here, is for my uh, Bullfang radio. And there's all kinds of clips on this bag. I need to do one more so I can release everything. I'm not, you're not going to be able to see it. I'm just going to have to do it this way. <laughs> and this side pouch is my sleeping pad. Another part of the sleeping system. Like I said, if you're inching it out, you're going to need everything. And an extra Mylar blanket. Also on here, because it's easier to carry it there, is a hatchet. This is a really nice heavy one. So it'll do good in, you know, cutting down branches. And small trees. Next, we're just going to leave those there. We'll fold this open. I have a chamois. Chamois are great. They can be used to filter water. They can dry your head. They can be used to collect rainwater off uh, dew, off uh, grass and leaves. Um, and it'll help filter it when you do that. Excuse me. I'll just kind of shove it there. 
as you can see, we're Ooh, excuse me. Um, this little kit is where I've got my arrows, uh, some chapstick, uh, pop-up towel, and uh, inhaler. Not an inhaler, a thing for your nose to help keep it clear. And it's a medicated style. I don't need medicated, but if I run across somebody who does need one, I've got one. But no, it's just a little kit that keeps my arrows in it. A good book, because you're going to get bored at times or exhausted and just want to do nothing but relax. Reading is a good thing. This is a good book, Herbal Medicine. Um, I got some key things locked in here like horseradish, um, see carrot juice. Uh, just, this book goes into uh, all kinds of stuff, tells you how to take care of stuff like snake bites. And uh, that's something to think about. If you're in an area like southwest U.S. where there are snakes, lots of them, you're going to want a snake bite kit. Just, just saying. In this top pocket, I'm not going to take it out, is a bandana and two candles. I have a bone saw. Because if you're not coming back to civilization, you're eventually going to have to process gear or something. And you may need to cut through a bone. Bone saw. Very, very good idea. Branch saw, just in case. Sometimes you don't sit there and feel like beating on something. It's just easier to cut it with the saw. So that's why that's there. Another part of the sleep system, some tent stakes. I got six of them here. These are nice, lightweight. They're aluminum. They're uh, triangles, you know, three-sided, three-shaped. And uh, they're nice. They're lightweight. Um... In the plastic ones, to fit the same size and weight, I could only get two stakes. So that's why I chose the aluminum ones. I can carry a few extra and stay at the same weight. And here is a cooking stove, and it's got my Atsunan kit. It's got a fishing kit, plus it's got extra fire starter in it. And, you know, if, I'm, if I've inched it out... Um, I'm probably going to be using two pot, different pots to cook with. I can cook in that one plus my canteen. And, you know, I can use one to boil water. My can oh, my aluminum canteen that sits over here, which I as well dig that out since I mentioned it. I can boil water in there while I'm boiling water in the other one. I can make up two dishes at once to, you know, add flavor, which we'll go over the food in a little bit. Also, if you're inching it out, you may be during bug season and you need something to deal with bugs. A couple of mosquito coils. Darn phones. A couple of mosquito coils is always a good thing. I'll be right back. I need to answer that. Okay, sorry about the interruption. Um, like I said, mosquito coils. Uh, we'll just kind of mark that under there. I'm going to set this down now. Just in case I knock it over, I don't want a bunch of bang, bang, bang. Okay. Next, more first aid stuff. Um, you know, some gauze, rat tourniquet, compression bandage, some ibuprofen, triangular bandage, some tape, pads, uh, Israeli bandage, some iodine. See what else we got in here. We got some Earthlight. We got an ace bandage. We've got Rain Poncho. And another survival blanket. Beef jerky, first part of the food. Oh boy. Some duct tape. Nice bright orange to go with the medical stuff. And just to point out, if you're inch bagging it and you're leaving Dodge and you need one of these, honest reality is, unless you have advanced first aid training, you probably ain't going to make it much longer. Just saying. Thumb it down if you don't like it. That's okay. Uh, extra compass. And a light that has multiple options. 
uh, fairly nice light it adjusts as well so that's pretty nice takes care of this I'm in the inside here I already moved it once a hatchet I think I mentioned that don't remember oh I knocked it over anyway it takes care of whoops and then I got a uh, bandana and some candles there uh, we got that, got that. This top little pouch up here at this top has got a couple more survival blankets. Watch, it's going to fall on me. And for quick and easy access, I have coffee and drink mix there. I'm not going to pull it all out. Just remember that it's there. Okay, that takes care of the front pouch. This top pouch, now it's time to dive into the inside. Let's just fold that over to start with. In here, like this pocket, I can get it from bottom for bottom, top or bottom. It's an assortment of tarp clips. I got cables, I got snap clips, I got some spring loaded clips. All of these things I can use to make a shelter, or if I need to hang a pelt to cure it, um, or hang meat to cure, i got ways to do it. Binocular, everybody knows what they're good for, no sense in going into extreme detail. Another old duct tape. Here, some more odds and ends of stuff. Got a sharpener for my knives. Chunk of fat wood. Good stuff. And it's kind of hard to see it because, uh, where is it? Where did I put it? Uh, we'll use this one maybe. Probably can't see it that well. That's with white light and it should look nice and orange. This piece is just chock full of resin. But a little extra fire starting stuff. Oop. The Ultimate Survival Guide. Yeah, another book item. Just in case you run across something you're not sure of. It's always nice to have a little backup literature. And if you're interested, in extra information is going to be an awesome thing. A Sharpie. A pair of gloves, depending on, of course, again, the weather you have to go through. I'm just going to throw them over there. Do, 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 do. Cutting board. Yes, I love my cutting board. I don't want to dirt on my food. Yes, I'm spoiled. Leave me alone. I have another Sharpie here with my Goal Zero Nomad 7 Plus Charger. I've got it clipped at this end, but I can hang this from a tree on the back of my bag. Um, I can use this to charge the flashlight batteries. Um, anything else I might need to charge. And this is a double-ended Sharpie. It's got the little teeny fine point, as well as a typical Sharpie end. Yes, I had somebody say, you need to add Sharpies. I got Sharpies. I just didn't have them there. Um, I showed this in a previous video. This is one of them uh, shields. You can float around a small fire to help keep it shielded, keep the wind off of it. That's it for that. I can just let that fold over. First part, another part of the food is some survival tabs. There's pros and cons of these. There's a mixed bag of reviews on these things. I can handle them. They're palatable somewhat. This is the chocolate flavored. So it's like a, eating a freeze dried chocolate ice cream bar. More cordage. Why so much? Well, good question. If you're inching it and you're having to build an elaborate shelter of some sort, you're going to have to tie logs off to trees to build a lean-to or you know, a full-fledged you know, cabin of sorts. Um, you're going to need a lot of cordage. And if you don't know how to make or use natural cordage, you're going to have to have something. So yes, lots of cordage. And yes, I do know how to do both of those. Schmiga. A hammock, which works well with this, which is my tarp. These two, I can create me a relatively nice shelter in 
you know, cool to warm climate. Uh, once it starts getting cold, it starts getting a little more difficult. So this would give me a chance to have a place to sleep while I'm building someplace else to sleep, if you get my drift. A bandana. A coffee filter strainer. Um, yeah, I can use it to filter coffee. I can use it over top of my canteen to filter stuff out. Or I can do it like this to really make sure I got the stuff filtered before I boil it to make sure there's no large particulates in it. Uh, up here we have water purification stuff. I have a couple extra ways to carry water. Got a life straw. Got zip ties. Many one uses for those. I'm getting into that in just a second. Relax. I got 10 minutes yet. <laughs> and all the clavin glasses. Like I said, this is just a one-person bag. You know, if there's two or more of you, it's got to double everything. And now we'll get into this. A way to grab a hold of a pot, potter pan without burning yourself. These little silicone finger thingies are pretty nice. Uh, I found them on sale at Walmart for a buck. So yeah, I picked one up. Actually, two. Of, there's a set in my son's bag. But anyway, now the food stuff. We have some tea. We have one bag of noodles, two bags of noodles, instant milk. I'm gonna run out of room. Some mashed potatoes. You'll see why. Several packages of oatmeal. Some lentils. Some rice, Tabasco sauce, gotta have it. Oops, I forgot something. That is another knife. And some more literature. And that, with the exception of the bandana, the candles, and the drink mixes, takes care of this bag. So as you can see, really, even though there's a lot here, there's not a lot here. Um, you know, the whole premise of an inch bag is to go out and never come back. I not coming home. <coughs> Excuse me. And yeah, I've got enough to survive me if I ration everything out, eat less than a thousand calories a day. I could probably survive a week and a half, almost two weeks, with nothing else. That's not without foraging for stuff. That's not, no, that's not taking any fresh game. Um, but obviously, when this is gone, you're going to have to know how to do all that stuff. And if you don't, well, you're not going to survive. Plain and simple. So is an inch bag plausible? It is plausible. I mean, there are people who go out to the woods and take what they call an inch bag and go out there and survive for weeks. But uh, I'm going to try and link to a video by Joe Robinette who took very few items and did 10 days out in the wilderness. And he's remastered it. And there's a couple things that I didn't notice in the remaster, but they may be in there. Um, where it shows that, you know, toward the end, he was starting to have some stomach issues. Now, he does have stomach issues, that's notwithstanding, but the point that I'm trying to make here is, if you already have an issue, and you live off a certain diet with no extra means, nothing else, it's going to really take its toll to you really fast. Um, you know, and he had actually 10 days less food than I've got here. And he made it. He fished a lot. He cleaned his own fish. And that may be where in line may have been some of his issues is the fish themselves. <coughs> but you just you know you need a variety for of food. You can't just live off of soups. You can't live just off of fish. You gotta have a balanced meal. And you know, that's why I've included some lentils, some rice, mashed potatoes, oatmeal, soup, meat. 
So is, you know, would this get you by for ever? No. I can't even pack it all up on here. But, you know, before you decide to spend the money on an inch bag, realize that nine times out of ten, unless it's we're suffering from a severe, you know, a, an EMP attack, and most of the population is dead, and the city centers are completely empty and deserted now, and you know, there's no food to be found anywhere, then maybe an inch bag is your best option. But in the end run of things, I don't see an inch bag being a feasible idea to bug out with. You need a bug out location. You need to know how to get there. And you're going to want either a group of people there with you or at least some sort of cash because where you've got, you know, a year's worth of food saved. You know, it, it just, unless you're going to some place that's got it, you ain't going to have it. And if you don't have a way to communicate with said group that you're supposed to meet up with at such and such time, there's no guarantee that that group's actually there. Or that maybe the night watch who doesn't know you thinks you're an invader and you end up dead because you didn't get a hold of the people that you were supposed to get a hold of first. So that that person knew you were actually a friendly. There's a lot of variable aspects to this. It's just like a military exercise. Without the proper information, you're prone to fail. You know, proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. And yeah, I've got enough stuff here to last me a while. If I need to use a tourniquet, I'm pretty much already dead because, you know, I'm not going to be able to save the leg, uh, wind up with gangrene. Then I'll either have to cut it off or the gangrene will take me completely. Well, that's just outside thing. I personally don't plan on getting hurt that way, but you can't plan for everything or you can't expect everything not to happen. You're walking with this super heavy bag pulling a trailer on wet roadside and you know the roads ain't been used in a while and you didn't see the grass is growing over this huge hole and you fall and slip and hole and slash your leg wide open on a concrete or a piece of rebar now what you know you've got an infected piece of rusty metal inside your leg and you know, bye doing these kind of thought exercises is actually good because it helps you fill in holes in your preps that's the main idea behind the whole thing. Yeah, you, like I said, a niche bag is a viable option, but you're going to need to tow a lot. You know, if my son and I were to have to leave the area where we're at right now for us to survive, the 400-mile journey that I would make to where I would prefer to be, I would still have to have a vehicle. I just can't carry it all. Now I know how to hunt. I can clean a deer. I can clean a ragged. Um... But between here and there, where there's a lot of wildlife available, if we're bugging out, that means everybody else is either bugged out or is out hunting the food. Now i got to deal with them. Uh, sparse population of animals, because they're going to get hunted there near to extinction in almost no time. And by myself, I can walk about 45, 50 miles a day. If I'm not hugging a pack that weighs almost as much as I, you know, half my weight. Or pulling the trailer that weighs as much as me hugging a pack that weighs half my weight. And trying to maintain my son as well. So, I mean, there's variables that you have to consider. Most people don't ever think about the, what some people would say, extreme cases. Well, it's that extreme case that you're, where, where you're probably going to wind up. If you don't plan for the extreme case and think about the easy case, then when the, you think it's, oh, it's going to be so easy and that extreme hits, you're going to be sorry out of luck. So, yeah, it's a long video. Okay. Sort of sorry it's long, but it's, you got to think about these things. Don't just go build a bag, put a couple thousand dollars in that bag and shove it in the closet. It's not going to do you a lick of good. I got a few people I know that have 50 of these. Oh, we can survive on those. No, you ain't going to survive. Um, just real quickly, um, 12 tablets is a serving size, and that's only 240 calories. And this little thing has 90, so that's not even four days worth of food in here. 
And I'm going to tell you something. I could probably eat one of these every 15 minutes and still be super hungry. Got to love kids. But it's, you know, that's, I'm trying to illustrate the point that just because you have this doesn't mean you're going to make it. Having all of this together will give you better options and better chances. So we're pushing uh, close to a 40-ish 40, 40 minutes here. And so you can see a majority of this stuff. And that's not even to close the bag and the belt. But you get the idea. There's a lot of stuff here to make it for an inch bag. So with that being said, leave me your thoughts down below if you've made it this far. Thank you very much. I have a Patreon store. I have a Teespring store. Um, links are below. Um, go check out the X Nation, um, his channel. Um, let's see. He also has a Teespring store and a Patreon channel. So um, X Nation is a good group of people. All honest, real, no fakery. Fake is kicked out pretty damn quick. So that's it for this video. Catch you all next time. Later.